All right then. One, two, three. Hi guys, my name is Nishant Mittal and I'm Sarthak Bharadwaj and this is the second episode of I read this book. Today we are going to be reviewing something which Sarthak read. It's a book by Haruki Murakami, the famed Japanese novelist and uh, essayist and journalist. <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> he is probably the most uh, in my opinion the most famous uh japanese novelist i've heard oh yeah of. in in terms of pop books mm-hmm. uh, pop, by pop i don't mean that his books are bad mm-hmm. of course pop by this his books are popular yeah and in that sense of course he is indeed very famous there are some other good japanese authors like kiga higashino uh the, which, the, the thriller yeah yeah like, the, okay. that one who yeah. he writes murder mysteries uh-huh. uh yeah but if you compare all of them haruki murakami is surely winning the race and i think he's miles ahead probably because he has written i mean does he have an american connect because i was reading about him and uh, you know yes i i'm not entirely sure till what extent has he pervaded the american market mm-hmm. although i am aware of the fact that his articles appear regularly in the new yorker and the new york times and this this book a sputnik sweetheart when it was released it topped the american best sellers so of course he must have you have... read any other book by uh, murakami oh yeah, yeah i have of course uh, norwegian wood mm-hmm. which both of us have read uh, thanks to you it was your recommendation yeah well <laughs> but you didn't really like that book did you no it was it's a little more complicated than that it's yeah. a You it's know, complicated. To, yeah, <laughs> it's hard to explain uh, yeah. how much I love or not love the book. Mm-hmm. But yeah, any uh, and what right, about right. Kafka on the Shore? I've heard a lot of good things about Kafka on the Shore. Yes, Kafka on the Shore is indeed a much acclaimed and praised book. Unfortunately, I haven't read it. Mm-hmm. The only thing I know about that book is that it's the story of a dog. Mm-hmm. But in what context? Uh, I don't know. But that book is surely on my reading list. Mm. But apart from Kafka on the Shore, I have read uh, IQ eighty four, the one the book yeah. kept over here. Yeah, yeah. This Which is nobody can see right now because it's hidden. Oh, oh but yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is a trilogy, and funny thing, Sputnik Sweetheart, mm. IQ eighty four, and Norwegian Wood. All three of them are books in which the central character, which is a woman, mm-hmm. uh, vanishes. Okay. And that's mm-hmm. funny because. that's the kind of writing maybe murakami follows and maybe he follows a set pattern maybe he does not uh, this uh, sort of this uh, storyline also happened in norwegian wood where the yeah yeah yeah, yeah of course yeah, i understand so tell me about sputnik sweetheart what do you what made you read this book and how do you feel yeah. about it what's yeah okay what what made me read this book quite honestly we have had this conversation a long time back I had been reading a lot of non-fiction mm-hmm. for a while now and mm-hmm. largely academic books mm-hmm. and I needed something which as the popular lingo goes to make me feel something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know and uh, f- when I want to read something like that Murakami is my go-to author. Wow. Yeah. And uh, other than that this book is uh, you want me to give you a brief of it? Yeah, please do. Yeah. So what happens is There are two central characters in this book, mm-hmm. Miu and Sumire. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm pronouncing the names right. With mm-hmm. <laughs> Japanese names. Miu so. and Sumire. Sumire, yeah. All right. S U M I R E and M I U. All right. Yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing them right. All right. My friend from Japan, uh, I have a friend called Mo Kitehara. She has a birthday today. Oh. So I'll ask her if we're <laughs> pronouncing oh, yeah. it right. You. Happy birthday, Mo. Happy birthday, <laughs> anyway. Mo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, does she watch? <laughs> might <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, where were we? Right. So this book is about Sumire and Miu. Mm-hmm. Sumire is a young college dropout mm-hmm. student who wishes to uh become a writer. Okay. Yeah. She's a fan of Kerouac's novels. Mm-hmm. Although I haven't again read Kerouac, but I got a gist of what his work is about mm-hmm. by the explanation of Murakami mm-hmm. via Sumire. Mm-hmm. So she wanted to be a free-spirited person, mm-hmm. uh wanted to do something similar to what Kerouac did, mm-hmm. which was to go live in the hills mm-hmm. in a cabin to research and write mm-hmm. for for a book. Uh but the funny thing is that she falls in love with a woman who is 17 or 18 years her senior. Mm-hmm. And Both these characters, Sumire and Miu, offer s- 
starkly contrasting personalities okay while sumire is this disorganized uh spontaneous spontaneous fragile mm-hmm. and lonely girl mm-hmm. miu is enigmatic mm-hmm. she's successful mm-hmm. and she is mature okay and she is not a lesbian while so how do they develop the yeah yeah lesbian? so the okay i don't want to delve into that aspect because that offers some spoilers mm-hmm. so uh, that'll okay, ruin but the fun do yeah yeah i i'll, I'll tell you yeah. they they do get involved but not quite okay let me come back to the gist of the novel mm-hmm. now this book is told from the perspective of an unnamed narrator mm-hmm. who has referred to only as k throughout the course of the book okay now essentially uh, sputnik sweetheart is the story of unrequited love mm-hmm. prime fantasy on the face of it mm-hmm. and k mm-hmm. adores sumire okay but sumire does not reciprocate his feelings all right and sumire and k are two people who are 3 am friends mm-hmm. they speak to each other about a whole lot of things anything under the sun anything under the sun so for a very long time sumire has been this girl mm-hmm. who faces problems because she has no sexual desire towards anyone and she so later realizes she is an asexual no 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 she is not an asexual okay but she does not she did not have a sexual desire towards anyone that changed when she met mew the the 17 year old senior yeah okay. exactly and that is when she realized that maybe she is not a straight woman mm-hmm. so again this book also brings into for the debate on the unacceptability of uh intersex love and mm. maybe marriages as well mm. in japan in japan because this book is largely set in japan mm-hmm. a small part of it is based in greece also oh wow yeah. nice that's like going so does, does it go like does it give you a tour a lot of books have this quality about them that they take you to places oh yeah oh yeah oh man so <laughs> when we speak of this mm-hmm. murakami is the master at this art when you're reading his books mm-hmm. and he's describing the beaches of greece mm-hmm. it is as though you feel the the summer breeze the ocean breeze in your hair mm-hmm. you can you can feel the warm sand underneath the summer sun on your feet and you just transported over there for that reason alone murakami in my opinion is a perennial contender for the coveted nobel prize in literature he's bound to get it at some point or the other I I had a similar experience when I was reading Norwegian Word because it it explained a lot of beautiful mountains oh, in yeah. Japan. Oh yeah. And it, they actually made oh, me indeed. experience But that, you know. You know about Norwegian Word in a recent interview that I was reading about mm-hmm. Murakami, he confessed that uh, it's not the book which should describe him. Exactly. He yeah. said that Norwegian Word is a book which is an anomaly. Mm-hmm. It's an aberration and a deviation from his uh, conventional style of writing. Mm-hmm. Norwegian Wood for those of us who have read it will uh, know that it is based upon realism. Mm-hmm. It's a very real story about normal people. Yeah. But that's not who Murakami is. Mm-hmm. Murakami is much more than that. He takes How much different he's more towards the range of Gabriel Garcia Marquez uh, or the the s- surrealism Exactly. Although I'm unaware of that author's work. but exactly magical realism yeah. surrealism so what murakami does in my opinion mm-hmm. is that he takes normal people mm-hmm. and puts them in abnormal situations okay the reader feels even though these things he knows are fictional mm-hmm. but he can't help but feel a part of this fictional world it any real. any similar experience that you can quote like somebody who's not read murakami and he's mm. read like okay i watch game of thrones oh, yeah. would that describe how how I, how i would uh, well they are i might feel yeah. about murakami or star wars yeah. well, any example yeah. that you can well call? george r r martin surely comes very close okay but george martin's uh, a song of ice and fire is something entirely else it's a, mm. it's fantasy okay right so this is not fantasy this is not fantasy this of is... course some parts of it, when you think about it mm-hmm. so some th- some things happen in murakami's books mm-hmm. which make you believe this is a fantasy mm-hmm. this is made up world mm-hmm. which it is but at the same time it is the story of real people mm-hmm. and 
it is a story of people we know people we have met something like this i read in uh, metamorphosis by franz kafka i okay. don't know if you read about no, it in that book Tell basically me. the guy becomes a becomes an insect <laughs> okay. uh, yeah he's the family guy he runs everything he runs the show he's the guy who's responsible for bread and butter of the family and one day he becomes an insect oh and what Man. he sees is the world keeps moving you know with or without him wow and that's a big big profound oh, yeah. realization exactly. which he gets and which we get after reading the because that's some is can i i, th- I think i think you're coming quite close because the uh, entire book is an extended metaphor it's an allegory mm-hmm. right and it talks about things which you have to derive the meaning of mm-hmm. you have to derive the meaning of the of the text which is written in this book it's not in your face it's not just a plot oriented book mm-hmm. it's it's philosophical and i think the fact that murakami has achieved this in a translated work mm-hmm. is outstanding so credit must go to the translator as well oh yes oh yes yeah. yes yes because I, i've I, read a lot of books which haven't quite yeah. translated well mm. even though i've heard a lot of good things about those books but when i read the english version of it which is the only version uh. i could read I was like massively disappointed. You know, Premchand's original works, like mm-hmm. Nirmala. Okay, you have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my mom's a big fan. I am. I love Hindi literature, so I've read Premchand and uh, Shesh Parichay by. You have. Uh, yeah. So my God, Sharad Chand, and it's unbelievable. And I've also read their translations just to see how it feels, and it doesn't feel yeah. the same. Yeah. But but Murakami serves the purpose. It does. He does, of course. And the translators must be given credit here. Yes. So would you recommend this book? I mean what would you say before giving this book to somebody you know that hey here's this book read it what would you say what would be your words I would say read this book and then maybe Sumire and you both can be a little less lonely Wow that was beautifully said actually because that's what this book made me feel about you know so right now a so lot of sumire and you could be a little less lonely yeah so you know has got to be very well done uh, very well done <laughs> <laughs> no really yeah that's beautiful and i'm so glad that this is the perfect note to end this oh, conversation yeah. surely it was a beautiful review satak great job thank you so much satak mm-hmm. uh until next time i read this book if you like the review you could let us know in comments If you didn't like it, of course you can do the same. Yeah. You can uh, like, share, and uh, you know subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. We we're gonna keep doing this. 